I've described linear time, like I guess over here you still you can get spaghetti. Like if you buy spaghetti, I mean the hard kind. Do you want one? No. Oh, if, you, <laughs> if you've got one, we could use it. We could use it for filming purposes. We could use. It. But you know. You can get one. Okay. We could, uh, uh, I've used this spaghetti many times in many talks, but but linear time is like a string, a, a piece of spaghetti. And if you boil it, you can seem to bend it, and <laughs> you can drop it. You can drop it. <laughs> Here it comes. Here comes spaghetti. Here it is. We've talked about this for so many years. Now it's time to put it on YouTube. <laughs> We've come all the way to Varmland, Sweden, to, to put it on YouTube. So, so this is really. This is a good the symbol, as far as symbol goes. This is a very graphic symbol. I wish they'd used this when I was in high school or when I was a child. My parents could have started the things off with when I was just little enough to understand it. Okay, this is time. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with here. Because they don't, they don't use the symbol. They just go, you're late. <laughs> Dinner was Fifteen minutes ago, and you are late. This is what late is. <laughs> they could just go, "You are late." <laughs> just have it in their par parental bag. <laughs> dinner was fifteen minutes ago. Here's where dinner was, and here's where we are now. And you are fifteen minutes late. Instead of using a stick to beat their kids, they could have just pulled it out like a ruler, like a measuring thing. And just said, here, every grievance that a parent has is about this, is about time. It's not really about behaving. Children that don't behave, oh no, the parent believes in time and is really angry about this belief and then tries to project it out and take it out on their children. You're late. Uh, I, had, I had you too soon. I, sh I didn't want to have children until I was <laughs> in my thirties, and I had you prematurely. You know, it's something around time. And with the children, this is the same issue. You know, I didn't ask to be here. Where is here? All the children, the teenagers can carry their little rulers out there too. I didn't ask to be here. Where? In time. Oh yes you did. Everyone who believes they're in time asked to be here. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> has to be here. There's none that were like, ah, oh, no, I, I didn't do it. I didn't plan. Now, if you believe you're here, it's because you asked somewhere in your mind, you asked to be in time. Why would, again, if, if God or meaning did not create a meaningless world, why would meaning cast meaning out of itself? into meaninglessness, that makes no sense. Why would love cast something outside of itself and say, well, you're love, but you've got to go out and, and struggle a bit to really appreciate what the love is. What? There's no struggle in love. Why would you have to go into time to learn how to love? I mean, some of you might have heard of the books Conversations with God, you know, Neil Donald Walsh, there's a lot of really pretty nice stepping stone, I call them teachings and philosophies, but they still have a bit of this duality and somehow that there's a purpose for coming to earth. God has a purpose for bringing you to earth. What a bunch of baloney. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's sick uh, that God has a purpose for you to come to earth. You know, that. If God didn't create the earth, if God didn't create the world, and God is love, and the world was made, ah, what's, what can we say about the world, the timeline? Jesus has some good words for the world in the Course in Miracles, although a lot of Course in Miracles teachers will never say this, but it's in the book. The world was made as an attack upon God. Oh, that's, that's setting this straight. <laughs> That's pretty strong. 
you won't even read that in the Veda Vedanta. <laughs> Go through the Vedanta looking for <laughs> the world was made as an attack on God. Oh, it's, we can go into Maya, but that's pretty strong language. Now, if the world was made as an attack on, upon God, why would God send you to the world? You know? Why would God send you to a world, to a world that was made as an attack upon God? That would be mean again. That would be mean to send you into a world. So, what we can say from all of this is that this world, it's been called Maya, it's been called illusion, and it's been called meaningless. And so, if you feel sometimes frustrated and depressed and upset and, and bored, and any of these emotions, anxious, if you have anxiety, if you have worry, if you have concern and everything, from what I'm sharing right now, it's not even surprising. Of course you would feel those emotions if you were a fish out of water. If you were used to f swimming in water your whole life and then suddenly you found yourself on a dry beach and it's 40 degrees centigrade <laughs> and it's hot and sandy and you are flipping around on the beach, you know, and you're not going very anywhere, you're just kind of flipping on the sand. That's, that's a frustrating scene, to be a fish out of water. So to be a spirit, out of spirit, on a noodle, <laughs> I mean that's, that's like the fish flipping, a spirit who's forgotten its spirit and it's like, you know, on a noodle now, that's pretty, pretty difficult. So, so in other words, if you've, if you've had struggles and difficulties in your life, it's not even surprising because of the mind's belief in time. That's, that's the problem. Now, we said meaning did not create a meaningless world. Now, that means that if meaning didn't create a meaningless world, that not only God did not create this world, but God could not understand this world. How could pure knowingness, pure meaning, understand a meaningless world? What is the definition of meaningless? It's, it is not understandable. So, the world that the ego seemed to make, God cannot understand. God cannot understand it. God doesn't understand stars. You know, I've heard this stuff for years. People have said, only God can make a tree. And then I'm like, he doesn't even know what a tree is, or a leaf, or an apple. Why? Because God is whole. And what? An apple is not. An apple is what? A part. And what do, we, what do they always tell us growing up? That this, the whole transcends the sum of the parts? The whole transcends the sum of the parts. The whole is real, and the parts are not. So it's, that's, they could have been even stronger than the whole transcends the sum of the parts. They could have just given it to us straight. The whole is real, and the parts are not. 